Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. We're all friends, we're here to have fun, but our story can include graphic violence, drug use, sexual content, and other mature themes. We talked at our table about safety, comfort, and consent, both as players and storytellers. We know what to expect. We're all excited to be here, and we want you to feel the same. So listener discretion is advised. Now, let's walk the path of night. Last time on Path of Night. The quarry was pursued into the Boston subway tea line by a mysterious, invisible assassin from the Web of Knives. In order to escape, we navigated the group past a wave of destructive specters lingering there still from the Great Molasses Flood. The ganger was plunged into a world of nightmares. Johnny sought the help of Kabir, and together the group managed to rouse Wynn in time to meet with Arabella Rollins. Arabella revealed not only that she was searching for the Air Codex, but that she knew where it was. Neil spotted demonic corruption in Arabella's aura. Arabella gave the mark of her dignitas to Miles, imploring his aid in retrieving the Air Codex from an abandoned Tremere Chantry in Salem. After the meeting, the woman who was possessed by the kindred comes to her wits and is very confused about how she ended up on the rooftop and sort of frightened she ends up needing a little bit of a a guidance and a nudge to get off the roof and go about her business and a little bit of mind wipiness to just Mm -hmm. settle that all down miles takes care of her memories and the group of you head back to the hotel yes okay shortly after arriving to the hotel the group of you find your ways into your room and get a chance to relax after all of the uh, oddities and intensity that you've experienced uh, since your arrival to boston miles actually gets a phone call as things draw closer to dawn i will uh, go out to our balcony and take the phone call miles arabella i am seated at my desk at this time and i'm beginning to make preferences for the foray into the chantry um what is it that your quarter is going to need in the meantime? We're going to need a place to stay that's safe. We're in a hotel right now that's moderately safe, but... A hotel? It's a good hotel. If such a thing exists. Should have saw the place we were staying before. That sounds terrible. It was. So, I have access to uh, a handful of Victorian houses that you can use for the meantime. I'll give you a handful of addresses... And you may make use of anyone you prefer. Fantastic. So we'll be getting the address into you uh, right away. After that, why don't we talk um, hardware? We do need it. We came up light thinking this was a mostly a meet and greet and maybe just a talk. We're almost totally unprepared. We have a couple of main weapons, but nothing else. All right. Why don't you give me a list of what you think your group is going to need in order to be fighting fit for the journey? Uh, assortment of uh, body armors, high-powered rifles. How many rifles? Mm, three. Are we talking automatic or something longer distance? One long distance, two automatic. One of them preferably a shotgun of some sort. Perfect. Uh, what else? Mm, do you have any way to store blood that we can trust? I do have a means of storing Vite. Um Is there some sort of hunting issue? No, we'll be fine to hunt. Once we get going here, but if we're traveling abroad, it becomes more difficult for, say, me. Did you resolve the issue with your last haven? You mean the fire? Yes, I mean the fire. We're working on it. I see. Why don't I call some blood dolls and send them your way? Fantastic. I figure the less time you spend out on the streets um, roughing it, the better off you are. That's true, especially in this city. Uh, Please don't kill any of the blood dolls. Not a problem. Uh, Was that the extent of what you needed in terms of equipment? I mean, after that, we could start talking about, like, I don't know, small explosive devices. I don't trust your quarter with that. I mean, it's more fun that way. Um, other than that, uh, you happen to have any silver? I know of a person who can I can purchase silver ammunition from. Okay. That might be okay. It's just, we keep running into things that it could be useful against. Are you concerned for lupines? After the one that I killed? A little. I see. Are you not? <laughs> No. Do you just not run into them or something? Well, the lupine was a result of Sabat, and I'm here in the city because they're in the Sabat. Fair. Do you know if there's anything particular that we should be arming ourselves with against? Uh, I'll make arrangements. Uh, So if you don't need any other weapons, I'm going to tap a contact for an inscription. I need some place to repair a katana. 
A katana? Yep. I will repair your katana. We had a small asimite problem. It notched my blade. I'm sorry, a small asimite problem? Mm Mm-hmm. In New York. I see. And now there are also asimites in Boston? Apparently. Who are they contracted for? Uh, I think Neil? And you have not killed Neil? I mean, we just got him back from being dead. It seems kind of gauche. Oh, doesn't he breaking even at that point and eliminating the Asimite threat? Well, it seems like we also have Asimites coming to New Haven at this point, too. Like, yes. friendly ones. Friendly Asimites. Friendly Asimites. Right. So, I don't know if your friend Neil has warned you, uh, but his sire trafficked with Asimites quite frequently and ended up being bloodhunted within the domain. Mm, I've heard. The reason that this happened was because when Asimites leave their secret hideaway, they go to kill kindred and disrupt Camarilla politics. If there are friendly Asimites who are coming to New Haven, those are simply Asimites who have not killed whatever kindred they've come for. I think something is happening. That's alarming. What has happened? I don't know for sure. We haven't had a huge download, but... And you've allowed them near into your company without knowing exactly what's happening? One of them saved us. So what? I understand that you don't care, but it means something. In kindred society, it means that they were making a purchase. So now these Asimites are in Boston. Well, one. We've seen one. Uh, Miles... You are infuriating sometimes. Sorry, I haven't had a lot of practice with all this outside the realm stuff. I counted What does on, that even mean? I don't know about the Asimites or any of that. I've been mostly focused with Sabat and the New Haven. Well, allow me to warn you. The Sabat attack as wild dogs. Mm-hmm. The Asimites are precise assassins. If they have come, it is because they intend to eliminate someone. And there is a very, very good chance that they were hired by the Sabbat of New York. I think they were, I can get back to you, but I don't I think there's more going on. Get here. back to me. Yes. Anyways, as for your katana, yes. I will make the arrangements to see to it that things it is repaired. This should settle everything you need in terms of raw equipment. Do you also need a vehicle? Yes. No, wait, I have one. I'm sorry. No, we have a vehicle. You have a vehicle? Yes. Good. What else do you need? <sighs> right. Is there any kind of like primer you can give us on the things we should expect inside this place that I can hand off to somebody else to read. I think I can make some sort of arrangement. There we go. I would like to be informed, at least. Now, uh, the inscriptions. Yes, you were mentioning that. I can acquire three of them. Within each inscription is the ability to perform a ritual as a one-time use. What rituals is it that your quarter is going to need access to? Scratch that. Put someone who is competent in this uh, area of expertise on the phone. Neil, I need you. What? What's up? What, I what's going the, on? I opened the sliding door and hold the phone out. Neil? Oh, yeah, actually, I... yeah, you're right. Speakerphone. There we go. Please pay attention. Okay. Neil? Yeah, hi. If you were to arm your quarterly with the rituals that they do not possess, what rituals would they be? Uh, from what paradigm? Hermetic thaumaturgy. Oh, okay. Um, give me... Neil, like, gives Miles a weird look, like, why are you having me on the phone with Arabella asking about thaumaturgy? Does not say anything. It was just like, uh... She's offering to give us inscriptions for rituals. And you want my opinion? Yes, because I don't know anything about magic. Why do you think I would? Is something wrong? Because you know about weird stuff. I mean, that's a little hurtful. But, uh, I don't know, like, let me... I mean, what are we walking into in there? Like, what would you suggest? All right. So why don't you just put Miles back on the phone if you're asking what I should suggest? It's Miles here. So you have a thaumaturge in your quarterly. I'm sorry, what? Intriguing. A secret between colleagues. Now, I will make arrangements to have the inscriptions created, and I will provide them to you. I will ensure that perhaps one of the inscriptions helps with your concerns regarding being summoned. Excellent. An odd method, but I think I think you will appreciate it. Now, with everything in order, I'm going to need a week to uh, acquire everything for you. Um, that should actually give us an opportunity to have some of my agents scout the area, and once the chantry is properly cased, we can begin. Sounds fantastic. A week is about what we need to recover in general. I look forward to hearing from you, Miles. Call me when you're ready. Will do. Will do. 
so begins the week of waiting. And as the coterie makes preparations, Neil and Johnny make their way back to the site where the fire took place in hopes of gathering information and finding out precisely who it is that's responsible for striking against them. When you get there, it is no longer, uh, there's no longer tape, but the area is kind of closed off because the fire was actually enough to where this whole building may need uh, to be shut down and may be condemned. Oh, man, it's it's like really upsetting seeing it from the outside. Like, just because we were in there, and I, I don't know, I just, those thoughts don't cross your mind? Not really. Why is that building upsetting? Because we were in it when it was on fire. You, there's no, like, emotional connection or memory that just sort of sticks in your head that you can't get rid of. Ask me again when we're, when we're inside, maybe. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of which, quiet. Johnny uh, goes and takes a kind of like peeks a look around, cracks open the the, uh, the door. You hear anything? Listen out to just see if there's anybody in the building or if it, it actually is abandoned. Inside the building, you can actually hear the sounds of like pigeons that have made their way in and rats that kind of crawl through the space, but that's about it. No, nothing really specific. Nothing crazy. What? Johnny nods like that's satisfying to him. He ushers you inside. Closes the door, or gives a quick sweep around outside, looking to make sure no one's following. Closes the door behind us. So, do me a favor, as they're sort of like walking through the building up towards where they had been staying. Walk me through what you saw in the hallway. Like, what happened? What happened in the hallway? All I remember is passing out and then waking up to you covered in blood and bodies. Well, when you woke us up, my, uh, my blood was pretty fired up. No pun intended. I managed to put the uh, fire out for the most part, and then figured that whoever had set it was likely still waiting outside. So I burst into the hallway, and that's when I saw three goons. It didn't really strike me as vampiric, or even really knowing a lot about our society. Just three guys hired muscle with weapons that they didn't necessarily know were going to be effective, but were effective against us. Blades, not guns, you know? Yeah. Did you get a read on, like, if it was hired or if it was implanted or... Honestly, you know, Neil, I, I was fading so quick that mean, all I could focus on was putting them down as fast as I could. Yeah, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Um, That was loud. You know, that was a pretty brazen... Over the last week or so, the last couple of days, Lex... Has there been any mention in, like, the paper or anything of arson or arrest? The fire is not discussed at all. Okay. Yeah, honestly, in the grand scheme of things, it was a small small little house fire that didn't actually bring the building down or do any property damage outside of the one main building. I mean, granted, this place might have to be uh, shut down for some extensive renovations, but... Sure. The fire is not really that noticeable in a city this size, and the, no, and the bodies end up being disappeared by the by the uh, the scourge. It's true. Yeah, that's fair. So at least the scourge took care of stuff. I'm just kind of hoping we could find. I don't know. Finding. I I was pretty sure. Yeah, it was the blood stains might help. It might. I can't imagine that they've already pulled the carpets out. Just just anything, any little any little droplets, any little patterns, something because like, you know, I was pretty sure it was Arabella, but she was telling the truth, at least as far as I could tell, when she said she didn't do it. Johnny uh, pushes open the door to the apartment that we had been in. The carpets have definitely been pulled. Ah. Whoever, the cleaners that kind of came through here were very, very thorough. However, in this, like, very dark, kind of damp space, you can kind of see these, like, water stains that have, like, soaked through the floor. And, Neil, you do notice strange patterns about the water. They got some weird splotches on the walls and some marks on the ceiling. I don't suppose you can just read weird shit like that. Uh, well, and Neil looks around to read weird shit like that. You take a look around and give me a roll. What difficulty do you want for Isaac Chaos? Because it's set by you. Seven. Seven, okay. So, diff two. Seven successes. Nasty. With seven successes, you look at the water, and the water is like a mirror. And the marks make you feel like this happened because of the group of you. This was retribution, something that you asked for. And then you hear the chirping of the pigeons, and you realize 
birds are watching, the rats are listening, and the vermin are the messengers through which this revenge is brought to you. Neil looks around a little bit more. He kind of sags and looks a little sad. Hey man, I didn't mean to put you down, but... No, 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 it's not that. Um, you know, you know when you're friends with somebody or somebody likes you a lot and then all of a sudden you know they're real mad at you and like it just hits a little bit harder? Does that make sense? I then mean, if like some rando was mad at you? I, I guess I can kind of understand. This, um, I think, you know, was a, a message from... It was a retribution. I mean, we kind of knew that, right? We knew it was targeted. We knew it was targeted directly at us. Right. Um, but who are we talking here? Who else, what other clan do you think we pissed off besides Arabella that night? Well, we did uh, pop a, a suit on Reese. And yeah, but I Reese may have, with uh, I may have helped. Watch your, I may have everybody's helped listening. put down uh, Shaw. Yeah. yeah. You're listening? Who's listening? <laughs> Pigeon takes off. Them. You think this is the NOS? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I do. Johnny kind of, like, stands back a little bit and, like, makes kind of like a, a face like he's whistling, but doesn't actually uh, whistle. The things you know. So, here's the deal, man. Um, we know that Shaw was connected, right? He was working for the web. I mean, I gave information for the web. That's why they like me. When we get back to New Haven, we're going to have to really, I mean, you and me... Mm, sit down. Well, the new Primogen's Shaw's kid, right? Yeah. So you think he's the one who called this hit? I don't know if it is. I mean, the clan, every clan has a thing, right? <laughs> like, every clan has a rally and cry. Who, who the is, Nos are no different. Do they? Who is Shaw's sire? Uh, Prince Warwick of Providence. He's part of Longbow, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's the one who's been setting up the web. Like, that's his thing. Shaw was his child as part of the web, which is the whole Nos House of Cards. I wonder how tight Pendragon, Warwick, and King are. Don't know. Because the Nos making a move on us, I wonder if Pendragon knows about that. I don't know if he cares. He might care so much as that it's questioning his authority by making a move of petty revenge against us when he's got other plans. Just something know. to think about. I mean, it's it's completely something to think about. But they, I mean, they are still in the cam, th tossing around a couple of boons just to say, "Hey, is it okay?" All all I'm saying is that, uh, and he kind of gets a little bit quiet about this. I mean, John, if if you, if you want, you can just think it. What? If you don't want to say it, you can just think it. He kind of shivers you. a little bit at the th uh, remembering this, the time that you kind of just broke in to say things into the head. If you if you. If you don't want to miss words, I just... He closes his eyes and kind of, like, nods like he's kind of accepting an uncomfortable truth and thinks into his head that if Operation Longbow is worrying about petty little power struggles that could potentially be in our favor. It's possible. Neil says out loud. So if we do... And this, he continues this line of thought. If we do have to negotiate with Pendragon... Having knowledge about Shaw's kid or Warwick making moves behind his back might be something worthwhile to have in our pocket. Something to keep in mind if the opportunity to if talk he, comes if up. If he doesn't know about it and we spring that on him, in the moment, Bruja, even an elder one like, like Pendragon, are prone to little fits of tantrum. Especially when friends of theirs start acting ways that they weren't expecting. Yeah, I know. Sorry. It's fine. So I, I didn't. I, I didn't know how to do it better. I'm sorry about that. By the way, I, I just didn't know how to do it better. What's that? Or, or on the street earlier when I I know it was uncomfortable. I just I didn't know how to. The um. After that, though, you did something that's kind of kept me a little bit more centered. Yeah, uh, you were. You were pretty mad. Uh, sorry about that, too. No, that's, um, honestly, it's not even my beast. Just something inside me gets rattled up way too easy. It always has ever since I got embraced. It's nice to have a little peace and quiet like that. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, if things get too loud, you know, let me know. I know what it's like to... So you, I, not so that, you, so you read that just from these water stains? 
And the and the birds and the rats that are currently scuttering around in the walls. Yeah. All right, Sherlock. So we're walking around, like just having this conversation. I'm gonna look at like the toilet, the tub, that like all that water is just gone at this point, right? Yeah, but there are like stains. The stains are there, like, but like sewers and sewage. Yeah, and there's not like a pool of stagnant water. Dark. Anymore. There's no pool of stagnant water. Okay. Yeah, it's just. I mean, I, I sort of talked about it before, but ever since I've embraced, right? Like, there's the world is just patterns, and if you just start seeing them, right? Like, you ever think about how river deltas look a lot like how your veins look in a human body? Look a lot how the veins look inside a leaf. Look a lot how like vine the patterns that vines grow up trees. They're all the same. Um, you just you just got to look at them different. As we're talking, and Johnny's usually a pretty active listener. He'll grunt along and kind of like just, you know, in response to things. He's been very quiet back out in the main room. Um, and when you kind of like poke your head back around the corner, he's just standing there staring at the the back of the door where he had kind of slumped down after killing the guys. You okay? Uh, what's, what's up? Neil like nods his head towards the door where there's probably... I mean, there's probably not blood stains at this point if cleaners came through, but like he nods his head towards the door. Well, with looking. your senses, yes. Okay. You um, you okay? Yeah. Yeah, it was just a hell of a night. Yeah. Um. Hey, man. Um. I know the, I know the sorcery thing makes you uncomfortable, and I'm, you know. Now that. And Miles just outed me to Arabella Rollins. He did what? Uh, I, it was an accident, but that was the kind of thing. Th- so that kind of thing. That's why I've been hiding it. I like. I didn't want to. I, I wasn't trying to be like deceptive or anything. I just. I'm afraid, you know. So that's just. But I. I, I wanted to apologize for lying to you, anyways. I, I know it's not. I mean, we're kindred. This is what we do. But I, you know, not to your friends. So I, I just. I'm sorry. Thanks for coming out and stuff. I get it, Neil. Um, what you do is never going to sit right with me. I got There's it. something about it that I feel like deep, deep down that that's just wrong. But at the same time, when I think about that, I don't know if I have a leg, a leg to stand on and telling you what you're doing is wrong. Well, so here's the deal, right? You wanna make a you wanna make like a like a gentleman's agreement here? If I ever go off the deep end and I start getting into shit like Arabella got into, you know What kind of shit do you mean? Demon shit. He kinda of like lowers his brow a little bit and kind of gives you a wide eye of like Yeah. I, I mean, in theory, right? In theory or truly destroy them all, but you know, after what I saw when we were talking to her on the rooftop the other night. She's, uh, she's doing some dark shit. Like, by, by my standards. So, just something to keep an eye out. And if I ever start showing signs like that, you know, have a conversation with people first, but if, you know. You know, we, I will. Uh, speaking of which, not to, to, to super change the subject, um, do you teach me how to throw a punch? <laughs> <laughs> During the week, as it comes closer to time for you to head out and break into the Chantry. Wynne, you had mentioned wanting to pursue a meeting with Ember Gina Giovanni. Yep. Okay, what do you do? Uh, Wynne takes out her phone and dials the number that she was given by the uh, Tremere squad. Yo, was an answer on the other line. Uh, is this Ember Gino Giovanni? This is a Francis Milliner. Ah, is it possible for me to speak with Mr. Giovanni? That is a big ask. Are you, uh, uh, mask, mask who's calling? My name is Wynne Cabot. I'm from the domain of New Haven. I'm a medium. Uh, I'm looking into some things that have happened in New Haven in the Shadowlands, and I was hoping to get Mr. Giovanni's input on what's happening. Yeah, all right. I tell you what. Why don't you head out to uh, Mimi at the Prudential, and I'll uh, take you to go ahead and meet with our uh, esteemed guest, Mr. Ambrogino. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Britta, you want to come on a road trip? Uh, sure. This might be a, an opportunity for you to get some answers about um, the visions you've been having. But um, I wouldn't 
I wouldn't ask too many questions about it. It just might be an opportunity for you to learn more about the Shadowlands. Just listen and learn? Probably the best call. All right. We don't really know what's going on with you, so we don't know if what we may know may is dangerous. Do you think they'd have any way to help Romeo? They might be able to contact him if he's following you around. Mm. Um, we can certainly ask. I just don't know if it's, um, we've heard some different things about them. The Giovanni. Yeah. This is definitely going to be one of those go with your gut. All right. Well, I'll be following your lead. You're the one who knows anything about this subject. I really hope you don't need to eat those words, but... I won't. Well, I trust your confidence. All right, we're supposed to meet at the Prudential Center. Ready when you are. The two of you uh, make your way to the Prudential, and uh, outside is a kind of smaller Irish gentleman, very well-dressed in, like, grays and earthen tones, and he makes his way over to the two of you. Greetings. Welcome to uh, the Prude, and, uh, you know, why don't we uh, head on inside? Uh, so I, got, I have to ask, um, what do you know about the Boston Anomaly? That it's reached all the way to New Haven. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, come on in. He, like, rings you in. People kind of get out of the way for him. There's this cold breeze that rolls with him as he enters the Prudential. The two of you get onto an elevator, and it kind of quickly zips up to one of the higher floors. I mean, it looks overlooks all of Boston. At the highest point, there is uh, a little bit of a social gathering. None of the kindred present were present at the Elysium that you visited. And awkwardly, you do kind of get the impression these people could, like, all be related. They all kind of, like... There's some family resemblance. There's some family resemblance. Awkward. And uh, we're all just kind of standing and looking out the window, and immediately you can sense just chains of enslaved ghosts latched onto him or bound into, like, rings that he wears is an old-world Italian-looking gentleman. Out of the corner of his eye, you can see that he glances to Milliner. Mr. Milliner turns and to the two of you and is like, I think he's ready to see you. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Giovanni. I'm Regino Turns. Uh, Ve bene, welcome. I am pleased to meet your acquaintance, but I have questions. So do I. Hopefully we can provide answers for one another. I would like that. I was to understand that the Gangrel clan left the Camarilla. Most of us did. And you remained? I did. I find that quite curious. Why? He kind of like turns and he starts like lighting a cigar and one of the Giovanni that's at the party kind of just drops what they are doing and rushes over to be available to light his cigar for you, or light his cigar for him while he's waiting for you to tell your story. There's an awful lot of people I care about who still have ties to the Camarilla. I'm tied to them. They're my family. And I don't walk away from family. And it's good for a woman to have an anchor to family. Wynn kind of... Just kind of nods. She was kind of expecting that kind of demeanor. And you've come about the anomaly, a medium. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. I find that also interesting. And who is your friend? Um, this is Britta Ashcroft, also it's of New Haven. It's good to meet you. I do apologize, but there is some strangeness about your friend, and she is going to have to have a seat. And he kind of gestures pretty far away from where the two of you are standing. We can address it after you and I speak. All right. All right. I'll see you after. Thank you for being understanding. Of course. Britta will stand and go to the directed seat. Wynn kind of gives her a, a look like it's going to be cool. It's going to be okay. Britta sits just very, like, prim and ladylike. And Ever waits. since um, a great storm came, many of the wraiths who serve their death lords have fallen to the wayside, consumed by the storm. But in case... They still hold power. I think it is best that your friend remain at arm's reach. All right. She is involved in things that makes her an enemy of them. She's an enemy of the Wraith Lords. By the way, Lex, I am listening. Okay. In case that's not apparent. <laughs> yes. Uh, matters that I am not terribly familiar with even myself, and 
that should concern you. I will take that into account. So how can I indulge your curiosity for the anomaly? I know about the stories about the sixth maelstrom being the last, and that this could be the sixth. I can tell you... I can tell you that the stories appear to be true. What will happen to the wraiths? And they will be consumed by the maelstrom, drawn deep into oblivion, and should anything return, it will be spectori. We encountered some of them in the Boston tunnels. Victims of the molasses ah, surge. It's still loose. He kind of like gives this look of like the kind of distinguished gentleman that loves like a good safari and hunting and like killing like a, a large wants, animal. Like He wants a lion. Yeah, like that horrible monster that you guys fled is like a thing of amusement to him. This guy's getting serious dose like he's the most interesting man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's so much building material. I am afraid that if there are loved ones on the other side, it is time for you to make peace with them. Because that entire world, everything that lies beyond, will be gone when the storm is finished. There's nothing that can be done. Ah, I don't know if that's necessarily the case. That's the answer I wanted. Thank you for giving me at least a little bit. The storm carries with it great winds, and these winds have thrown souls into corpses, and the dead walk. I've encountered some of these, actually. Yes, yes. Well, we believe that this is tied to the dead subconsciously, desperately attempting to flee the storm. And so, in its own way, the world of the living and the dead become one. And he kind of, like, gives this insanely charming smile at the thought of the world of the dead and the living being unified. So, may I offer what may be some conjecture? Of course. That's Are why you're invited. I think it sounds an awful lot like you want to be a sailor, and you want to harness these winds to direct the wraiths into the bodies that you choose. The Giovanni have had the power to do this for centuries. The, the, the dead riding on corpses is not new to me. What is new is that this happens against their will so frequently. Normally, in order to, for the dead to animate a corpse and ride it, they must draw upon the magic of their arcanoi. This is nothing. This is a, a state of the world causing strange events between the world of the living and the dead. This is something that has never happened. No. And that sparks my curiosity. You are the only member of the Camry who seems to have an interest in this behind uh, m members of the Chumir. That doesn't surprise me. I have a vested interest in keeping the land of the dead as hospitable as possible for the wraiths there. I am afraid your own life is spent in an era where thrones have crumbled and kingdoms have fallen. What lies on the other side of this storm is not known even to me. But I promise you this, Madonna: If there is a way, I intend to find it. And I do not intend to keep this secret to myself. You would share it even with the Camarilla? As a whole? I don't know if they're even interested. But I would share with a few. If you would count me among that, I would be very grateful. I don't know that there's anything I could do. I don't know that anything I can do extends beyond seeing and interacting with them. You said that you have a can, you have witnessed this creature of molasses. Yeah. Well, he grabbed me. That is something of interest. She, he kind of points across the room, is also something of interest. New Haven, I am also interested. There's a lot of that going around. New Haven is very close to New York. But it's safely out of arm's reach of it. There, uh, there is something I seek. Um, perhaps you and I can work together towards it. In the meantime, I notice that you are concerned that all you can do is hear and speak to them. Have you come in search of more? I wouldn't say no to more. There's one I just want to punch in the face, but honestly, am, it, uh, it extends further than that. I am the child of Augustus Giovanni, and I have great sway within the clan. Perhaps a trade. I'm listening. Her. In exchange for necromancy. I'm afraid there's no deal there, Mr. Giovanni. Why is that? Because she's family. Family can take many forms, Madonna. 
she is my sister, she is my child, she is a great many things to me, and even the ability to save things that I hold very precious, I wouldn't trade her for. Then perhaps something different. You have my attention. Because of the presence of the storm, those of the dead have become few and far between. It is the will of my sire that uh, a close eye be kept on the presence of Spectori. Be my eyes and ears in the courts of the Camarilla and seek out where the Spectori lie. And if you can do these things to me, if you can provide useful information, perhaps you may learn the arts of necromancy. That's a deal I can make. The bene. I'm bringing your friend over. Wind turns and motions for Britta. Britta comes over uh, casually, as if she were waiting and not listening. I understand you are someone of great value to my guest. But where you go brings trouble even for me. I'm afraid that I don't understand. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you be willing to, willing to explain? Give me your hand. Britta extends her hand and places it in his palm. He turns so that your hand faces up. If you are to remain family of my dear friend Wynne, you need to get answers. You need to know why you are such a threat. And I believe this will help you. And he very gently rubs his thumb along the inside of your palm and exerting some sort of like eerie countermeasure against magic reveals a crescent moon on your palm that was not there before. He lets go. I have matters I must attend to. Thank you for your time, Mr. I Jeevan. hope to see you soon. Britta pulls her hand back and kind of grasps and her he wrist walks away. in her other hand and looks to the looks to the crescent. Does it look the same as when she was, like, etching it into her hand? Yeah. And I imagine it it's does. right along, like, the lifeline, probably. Yep. So Britta's staring at this crescent, trying to, like, pull any association of memory from it nothing is it black it is a black crescent moon yeah. on your palm so johnny is standing outside the uh the van waiting to see the haul of equipment that miles has procured and he pops one of his few precious remaining morleys into his mouth and lights up all right. Looks like we've got a pretty good haul here. Starts popping open some cases here. Um, let's see. We've got a very large sniper rifle. I'm not sure if this is going to be useful interior-wise, but it could be. This is a Beretta 50 cal. And then we've got two assault rifles. Uh, looks like there's European Stay Hogs. A FAMAS shotgun. Hmm. Very much likes the European brands. Uh, looks like we got a Red Hawk in a special case with two... With Looks like two full, about 12 shots. I'm sorry, what's a Red Hawk? Uh, right. Uh, it is uh, pulling it out as a large caliber revolver. What, what's special about the shot? Why, why only 12 shots? Looks like they're silver. At least that's what the ca- that's are, what the writing we, indicates. We're not going anywhere with a lupine, are we? I don't know. Do you know? I mean, there might be other things affected by silver, too. Better safe than sorry. Oh, that is yeah. exactly correct. Okay. And even if we don't use it now... We have it. Uh, here is uh, my katana. He slides, <laughs> holds onto that, and looks, and slides it out. Oh, this looks very good. And then I've got these chimes with a note on them that says "Chime of Unseen Spirits." Uh, it looks like they will chime if there's a spirit in the nearby vicinity. Oh, she she went all out then. Huh? Just and it looks like I've got some scrolls or something like that. I can't make them out. It looks like gibberish. So I assume this to, must be for you, Neil. Do you want to take a look at it? Yes. Let's, okay. Johnny picks up the, the shotgun while Neil inspects some You'll, of the esoteric materials you've picked up. He kind of just gives it a once-over, shrugs, and kind of pops it in the back seat behind the driver's side. When do you know how the chimes thing works? Um, it alerts us to the presence of spirits. Okay, so if we split up, we'll take it yeah. away from you, maybe? Yeah. All right. It probably would be not best to give that to Neil. What does that mean? Do you really want something that could go off at any time without... Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, no, that totally makes sense. Yeah. I, I don't know. That Didn't click? 
It, d- it didn't click. Got it. Sorry. Uh, Johnny cracks a smile and shakes his head. Neil starts looking around at these, like, weird scrolls and stuff. Um, Miles, did she give you a note? Did she tell you what these are? Uh, yeah, let me take a look here. Uh, my thing says, uh, inscription for extinguish, and something you, says inscription useful. for iron body. Iron body, okay, okay, so. And then some sort of mirror. So these are, um, yeah, so these are, these are rituals, any, any, anybody can sort of do these, uh, also tells me she either got them from a Tremere or she is a thaumaturge herself to, to create these. But so so one of them is going to, to uh, just put out fire, which is, you know, extremely useful to have. And then the other one is going to, you know, make you stronger, t- t- like tougher to hurt, harder harder to kill. The ritual will just sort of go off and affect whoever does it. Um, you said something about a mirror? Yeah, I think this mirror says something about it. it can hold three people comfortably. In like an extra dimensional space. I have to assume otherwise. It's not very big otherwise. Okay, so three people? Okay, so 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 what I'm hearing here is, um, so we need to get out of the city and we need to get past Roman Pendragon. I believe Somebody Arabella else. said she was working on that. She was working on it? Yes. Okay. But or, there's To go to everywhere. Salem, not to go back home. No, obviously. Right. We'd have to go to Salem. I'm sorry, what was it, Freda? There's eyes everywhere, though. I mean, I would think that the prince would let him know, right? If he saw us. The prince has yet to recover Arabella Rollins, and she's been operating up in here for quite some time. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt, and she can figure out how to do the same for us. And we're not going to be gone. For Once we're ready to hit the road, you give her a call. Make sure that we got the uh, we got the cover that we need. Right. So, al- alternate potential solution, Okay. Uh, so there's, there's the, the five of us. If we need to get out, do, is any of us, I mean, who of us could resist maybe a Roman Pendragon trying to summon us? The answer would be none. How would we know if we could do that? I, I don't know. I, I, I don't, you know, I was kind of asking people who aren't me. Um, but if like one of us could, right? Just, just in theory. So one of us could, if one of us could, they could drive the van Three people could hide inside the mirror. You're in a different dimension. You can't get out. I ain't going in no fucking extra-dimensional space. Okay, well then maybe you're the one to drive the van then. I uh, mean, he should really be the one to drive the van. I don't disagree. Uh, I think we should save off and then putting I, ourselves into a weird mirror for Okay, now. I'm just saying, it's a possibility, and then I could sever, like for me, I could sever my own consciousness from my body, and we could just do it that way. Well, that's that's good to know, but let's we're putting the cart before the horse a little bit. Let's well, focus on getting to Salem and getting well, back. But this is part of getting to Salem and getting back. That's what I'm talking about. In case Arabella doesn't come through, I, I don't know. Right. If Arabella doesn't come through, I feel like we've got bigger problems. It's fair enough. It's a fair point. I mean, maybe just starting with the basics, um, keeping our faces covered and taking the back roads? Yeah, I mean... Sounds fine to me. I mean, the back Johnny, of the band is completely cut off, so... Johnny also wants to make an occult role. Now, he's not very good at this, and most of his occult knowledge is gained from hanging out late with Kabir and him telling me stories about what kind of shit to not get involved with. Is there any chance that maybe Kabir's told me some stories about what not to get involved with in a shantry? Let's find out. No. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like I get an extra die from having an ally tell these stories. You sure don't. <laughs> he told you not to get involved with a shantry, most likely. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you really want to know what Kabir's advice would have been, you know, you think on it, and it's something along the lines of like Kabir being like, my friend, no matter what happens, never go into a Tremere shantry. It is nothing but pain and confusion, and they never pay you for the services rendered. Can it really be that bad? My friend, uh, it is much worse. I am sure go it so you don't go insane uh, with the truth. All right, all right. Johnny reflects on that conversation he once had. Yeah, all right. Why don't we? Uh, why don't we all try to just remain calm? You give. Uh, you give your uh, cousin a call there, and we'll just take a trip up to Salem. Uh, not to sound like a paranoid psychotic, but just a couple, couple other real quick things. Power uh, through. One, do I, I? I did it before. I did it when we were going to go after Zintosa. Um, Johnny, I know you're uncomfortable with the Doronki and everything, but I, I could try and see when is auspicious. I would need a little bit of blood from... I, I can't do it for everybody, but for a couple of us to sort of bolster our will uh, going in. And then the second thing is she, she didn't tell you what kind of uh, arcane defenses and wards might be there specifically, Miles? Because if That's she a, did... No. No? No. Okay. Because I could ward us Tremere against... Tremere stuff? Yeah, but there's a lot of paths of magic. I can only ward us against one thing and I don't well, know what that would be. We'll tell you what. You give her a call... 
get her on the horn, ask her what she's what she's done to make sure we can get to Salem without Pendragon finding out. And after she's given you a suitable explanation, let her know that uh, that your friend wants to ask her about a few of the warding. Uh, what do you, what'd you call it again, Neil? Just whatever wars, whatever paths. Yeah, just pass the phone over to Neil and have him explain. I really don't want to talk to her about thaumaturgy. I'm very uncomfortable with the idea of her finding out that I am a thaumaturge. Well, it sounded like last time we talked, she kind of uh, got tipped off to that anyways. Yeah, I'm trying not to have a complete freak out about that right now. Well, does anyone really have any reason to believe her? I mean, she's in total exile. Just asking the question is is enough right. to look guys we're burning moonlight here we need to stop going over every possible outcome and ask miles if he has armor in that kit of his you provided armor before did you not bring it with you no i assumed we would get equipment here i uh, will take a look all right uh okay i need it less but it would be good to have extra i mean i brought mine i don't know what i don't know if she provided any of the just weird miscellaneous items not by weird, by just regular. She did not provide weird miscellaneous <laughs> items. It was it's ba- it was basically specifically to whatever you felt was needed. Right. Did anybody else not bring? The- I, I thought no. I asked for armor. I have I have mine, but you because I, d- I didn't want to leave it behind because I was afraid you'd yell at me. Did uh did Wynn bring body armor up to Massachusetts with her in no. her in her original kit? No. Okay. No. Did everybody else? Uh, yes, it's in my. Johnny. Yes. Did, I mean, yes. she's got her leather jacket. I feel like. All right. If the answer is no, the answer is no. That's yeah. fine. I just wanted to know. Do you want mine, Win? No, I want you to have yours. Okay. I can take care of myself in that regard. I was more worried about the rest of you. Well, I'm, I'm hoping nothing ever touches me. So am I, buddy. Right. Jenny cracks a smile at winning. Ah, uh, it's sweet of you. Let's get in. Yep. All right. Can Please. you do your thing there, or do you need to do it here? I can do it on the way. Okay. I'll just need some blood from two of you, whoever wants to do it. I'm fine with that. It was really helpful last time, but, I mean, it would be helpful to either one of you. We, you can decide on the way. I, I just I want to make sure that we can go. Call Arabella. Yep. Everybody load your stuff in. Get okay. I'll call the number that she gave me. Miles. Calling already? We're ready to go. Thank you for the update. Are you ready on your side of things? Yes, of course. All right. Just checking in. What are you doing exactly to prevent Pendragon from... <laughs> I am having a colleague of mine perform a ritual called Night of the Red Heart. The ritual is very simple. Either the ritual is obstructed by midnight, or the target of the ritual dies. Now, normally I like to have this performed upon a torpid kindred, because when the ritual is cast, the moment it begins, the recipient, the subject, the target of this weapon, is made aware of its casting and where it is being cast from, so it becomes quite dangerous for the caster. In the case of Pendragon... We simply need him to be angered and offended that someone would do some such thing. And should I lose my companion to the wrath of Mr. Pendragon, I trust that you will ensure that this sacrifice was worth my time. We'll get it done. Are you meeting us there? If I can. It depends on what's required on this end. Keeping Mr. Pendragon busy is quite a task. I'm sure you understand. Correct. It was my impression that you had had some knowledge about what's going on inside this chantry and that you are going with us, but... It is my intention to go. All right. Uh, but, as I said, I don't know how much... I don't know how much time the Knight of the Red Heart will keep Mr. Pendragon for our... Well, we're about to move out. Good. Well, hopefully we'll see you there. I look forward to it. Thanks. Hey, we can't see out these windows. Should someone be up front with Johnny to keep an eye out? In case anything like... Um... New York happens. I assumed Miles was riding shotgun. I mean, if you want to be conspicuous about it, that would be great. I'm not exactly low profile. All right. Do you want someone else to ride shotgun in this case? I think we'll be fine. Look, New York was all kinds of sideways. Yeah. I got. I planned out a route to Salem already. Okay. I don't think we're getting any trouble going there. New York, we had a Asimite assassin on our tail and had to lose them by driving through Sabat territory. This is nothing like that. I'm worried it might be like that. Oh, have a little, have a little trust, kid. Okay. She's got some sort of ritual to essentially make Pendragon mad and distracted. All right, then we should probably get going. All right. Yeah, I guess we should pull out now, then, huh? Yeah, she's aware. She'll probably start it relatively soon. I agree with Britta. Britta hops in the back. 
Path of Night is an actual play Vampire the Masquerade podcast set in the classic world of darkness. Britta Ashcroft the Toreador was played by Rebecca Steigelfest. Johnny Saxon the Bruja was played by Garrett Gabby. Miles Davenport the Venture was played by Tim Davis. Neil Foster the Malkavian was played by Rob Meerhead. Wynn Cabot the Gangrel was played by Erica Webb. Your storyteller was Lex Lopez. Recording by Rebecca Steigelfest. This episode was edited by Rob Meerhead. The music used in this episode was January Grunge Love Fest by Technoaxe. Visit them online at technoaxe.com. Path of Night uses the 20th anniversary edition rule set of Vampire the Masquerade with a few limited house rules. Vampire the Masquerade is owned by Paradox Interactive. Make sure to subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. Follow us on Twitter at Path of Night Pod, on Facebook at facebook.com slash Path of Night Podcast, or email us at Path of Night Podcast at gmail.com. See you next time, Kendrick. I need to amend my previous statement. I did bring my armor. <laughs> I am not a complete moron. <laughs> Wynn says as the van pulls away, like pulling it out of a bag. <laughs> Oh, it was under my third flannel. <laughs> I feel like one of the coterie is like, yeah, no. Wait, that's we, not we, a flannel. We, we know you forgot when. That's why we already packed it for you. <laughs> oh, you guys are the best. That was Neil. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say thanks, Neil. <laughs> I saw stuff laying around, so I packed it away. <laughs> yeah, I just I put it in a bag, and don't worry, the, all the pockets are filled. With pennies. The candy! <laughs> With I Turkish delights. I put. <laughs> I love uh, Turkish delight, but the idea of just like them sitting in like, just like in ballistic pockets without any like wrapper or anything is so yeah. fucking gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's only one of the pockets. The other one is filled with big league chew. I was thinking just tax for no reason. <laughs> if it's not big red, then fuck you. <laughs> one of them is just completely filled with like tops baseball cards. Those are important. So I don't lose those.